All right, so here's the problem we're going to do. We're going to do the geography game that I told you about yesterday. QBF reduces to geography. Geography is that game where, where everybody gets a book. And this is regular geography, not my weird version where people play by themselves, but the version where people play against each other. You pick a move, a country in the, in the universe, the person continues with their move, starting with a letter that your country ended with. The way you think of it in mathematical terms or computer science problem-oriented terms is somebody gives you a graph, something like this. Say, I start here. And these arrows represent that the last letter of this country is the first letter of this country. So I make dots for every country or geographical location, and I connect arrows according to the last letters and first letters. And then we play the game on this graph. I start here, and I move here, let's say. So now that's taken. Now it's your move. You only have one choice. There's only one country left. You go here. Now it's my turn, and I got no moves, and I lose. That's geography. You're given a directed graph. Somebody's got a starting place to move from. And the question is, is that first person going to win, or is that first person going to lose? I'm going to convince you that in geography, if you can figure out whether the first person wins or loses, then you can solve this problem. I'm going to convert any one of these problems into a graph. And if you give it to somebody who knows how to solve that game, and they tell me whether the first person or the second person wins. If the first person wins, there's going to be a satisfiable assignment here. And if the second person wins, there won't be a satisfiable assignment. Everybody with me on the plan? Yeah, Can Teresa? Tell me where the universal is in the game over there. Yeah, person number one is existential, person number two is universal. You're going to see it in a second. I'm going to go make the, uh, the diagram. I don't know. I lost it, but I know how to do it by heart, so it doesn't matter. Uh, here's the picture we're going to make. Here's the starting point. This is where I start. We're going to have a little diamond like this for every one of the variables. Remember how we tried to decide the truth or falseness of this before? I'm going to mimic exactly what we did before, but turn it into the context of a game. That's why we did that before. So this would make more sense. So here's what we're doing in this game. I start here, and if I go here, this represents x1 being true, and this represents x1 being false. So I move to the side that I think is true. Either x1 is true or x1 bar is true. Right? And now it's your turn. Where do you go? You go here. <laughs> I'm just pushing you along in my game. And then I go here. And now it's your turn. Now you're going to choose for x2 whether x2 is true or x2 bar is true. This is kind of the setup. We're marching through this game. There's not too many choices. All my choices have to do with whether x1 gets used or x1 bar gets used. A true variable is one that's going to be used. And then you get to pick whether x2 gets used or x2 bar gets used. And we're going to do this one more time for x3. I have these little edges just to take up the space for, for the other person's move to make sure that we alternate. So here's x3, x3 bar, back together. OK. So I might pick true, you go here, I go here. You might pick false, I go here, you go here. I might pick true, you go here, and now it's my turn. Is it my turn? I went here, you went here. It's the first person's turn. I want to convince you now, after we've chosen these true and false variables, that this whole formula is true. You want to convince me that one of these is not going to have a true variable in it, right? That one of these clauses is all false. So it's my turn here. I just go down. And now here it's your turn. You're going to pick the one that you think is false. 
you get three choices. Normally, there would be arrows here for as many clauses as there are. Okay? Here's clause number one, here's clause number two, here's clause number three. I'll call them C1, C2, C3. C1, C2, C3. If there were more, there'd be more. You choose one of these, the one that you think is false. And now everything's going to close up and you'll see how it works. I have to convince you, since you picked the clause, that that clause is really true. How do I do that? I have to pick a variable in there that's marked true. So here's what I'm going to do. C1, let's actually play this game. It'll make it more clear what to do. Uh, you guys win the game, right? Whatever I do, so it doesn't matter. Let's say, I'm going to go here. I'm going to pick this side. You go here. I go here. Which side do you pick if I pick x1 true? Do you remember? x2 is also true. So you go this way. Then I go here. You go here. I can pick anything I want. I don't think anything works. Say so I'll go here. You go here. I go here. Which clause now do you know has all the falses in it? That's where you want to go. Which one? The second one, right? All right, now what messes me up? What messes me up here is if the only way out of this spot is all falses, then I lose the game. But if there's a true out of this spot, then I win the game. But we marked all the true and falses really carefully, right? We put X's on all the true ones and open on all the false ones. So what edges should I connect here to make sure that the game finishes up right? If x1, x2, x3 is in a clause, then I should allow this one to exit on all the opposite values. Same thing here. Let's look at c2 in particular. Let's going to connect it to x1. Sorry, x1, not x1 bar. Connect it to x1 and to x2. When you pick this spot, you killed me. The only way for me to go out is to go to the two things that are marked false, to go to the opposite of the ones that were in there. So I lose the game. If you had picked this other clause, I would have had a way out. So where does this other clause go? C3 goes to x2 bar and x3 bar. And C1 goes to x1 bar and x2 bar and x3. The opposite of whatever these are. What's that? Oh, C1, not C2. Thank you. I'm going to erase these x's. We're going to play the game again. I didn't mean to imply that we create the reduction after we play the game. We don't. The reduction is set up like this. This is the graph. I want to know who wins the game on this graph when I start from here. Who wins this game? If you guys win the game, then there's not going to be any formula here. If I win the game, then there's going to be a formula here. So you know what? Can I change this formula a little so that I can win the game? Is there an easy way to do that? Then we'll play a game where I can win. Let's play this game again and see if you guys can win. I'll go this way this time. You have to go here. I have to go here. Which way do you want to go now? You guys go here. This corresponds to me picking this one true. corresponds to you picking this true. I go here. You go here. Now I go, say, this way. You go this way. I go here. Which clause do you want to pick now? If you send me back to C2 now, I'm going to win the game. I'm going to go out and go here, and then you lose. Because that's a bad choice for you guys. Right? C2's got a true one open. But if you send me over to C1, if you go here, I'm blocked off here, and I'm blocked off here. If you can always send me to a clause that every single way out is blocked off,